So let me start my talk with my own story. <clears throat> let me take you back, 35 years back. 35 years back, I completed my 10th standard. And I used, uh, it used to call school living certificate. After completing the 10th standard, I was asked either to be a doctor or to be an engineer. No option. And I was not labeled as a very extraordinary student. I was not labeled as a talented, so-called talented student. They have labeled me as an average student. And I don't know why and how they have labeled me an average student, still I do not know. But I was told, you belong to that category, average student. As an obedient teenager, I followed them. I took a science and I became an engineer. After coming back from my engineering, after coming back to Nepal, I didn't know why did I become an engineer. For what? I spent a few months here and there as a programmer and consultant, and finally, I landed at an academic institute. And here, slowly, I started enjoying my job. I started listening to my student. I started loving having a coffee with my student. And here also, I was told, your simple undergraduate degree is not enough if you want to sustain an academic institute. I was told to the master, PhD, whatever. I followed them. I did master, PhD, and postdoc from the reputed universities in abroad. And after coming back again and rejoining to this academic institute, still I was not convinced. For what? I spent so many years just to get the education, but for what? To get the promotion? To get the handsome salary? For the social status? I was very confused. I was very confused, and I, and I started trying to dissecting myself. So for what reason? Then I uh, uh, consulted many of my friends, and I asked them, see, can you tell me why did I do my PhD? They said, come on, don't be crazy. You did the PhD, and you're asking me why you did the PhD. Right? So this type of question, it was keep on coming to my mind. And series of such questions. And finally, what I concluded, See, I started my education since the kindergarten. I did up to the post talk, but at the end of the day, I do not know what exactly the education means. Then a few, few questions came to my mind. What is education? What is education? And let me be very honest. I consulted my friend, my senior, even so-called educationist. Yes, I got many answers, hundreds of answers, but I am not convinced. I am not convinced of those answers. And I thought, maybe I, I'm going crazy because I am asking such a stupid question to all of them and not getting a good answer. I was very confused because I was not convinced then similarly, second questions came to my mind. Why education? Why did I spend so many years just the name of the education? Here also I asked. And what happened once, once when I was having a coffee with one of my students, because I love having coffee with my students, because I like their company. And what happened, so I asked one student, what is your favorite subject? He replied to me, so database management system is my favorite subject. I said, wow, great. Then I asked one question. Have you studied normalization? Because in database, there's one chapter called the normalizations. Have you studied that? Then he replied to me, yes, of course I did. So then I asked why. And you know what, what answer he gave me? Sir, you don't know. This is a very important chapter of database management systems. Every year it comes in the final exam. 
carrying the full marks. And you thinking I'm full of avoiding that chapter? Right? That was the answer I got. Then I realized he is not full. I am full of asking the questions. Right? So this, again, this question, you know, it, it tossed me. And, and also I asked, uh, like, my friend also, said, no, if you get a graduation, you get a uh, good, sal good salary, sort of status, beautiful wife, that I did got it. Right? I was convinced, okay, at least I got my beautiful wife. Okay? But what, what next? Then what happened, these questions triggers me another question. Why are we still belongs to the least developed country? Though the planning commission has said we have graduated to the developing country, but still we have uh, some features and characters of uh, least developed country. Why? Then it took me back. Why are we still least developed country? I did a couple of research, a small research, then what I concluded, because we do not know what we need. We are expecting someone else from our side. We are inviting some expert from our side, and, and we, we ask them, please tell us what we need. Then another question again came to my mind, so many questions, right? Why we are not in states, or why we are not in a state of expressing our need? Then the final conclusion was, I am not trained for that. I am not trained to tell my need. I am not trained to tell my expectation. Because the education which I am referring till now, it is copied from somewhere else, and that education was copied for uh, or made for someone else. So second copied education we are following, and we are expecting that education to help us. That was my conclusion for education. We are expecting so many new diseases they have come, but we are referring the same old, dead expired medicine for the new disease. So that was my conclusion for the education. Then again, I started. It's very easy to say, I don't believe in this education, but it's very hard to say. If you do not believe in this education, what is, what is, the, what is your view of education? Then what happened? So I believe. Education should empower us, empower our student. It should give the strength to our student to manage the challenges, solve the problem. Not only that, even create the opportunities, not only grabbing the opportunities. We want a student to create the opportunities for today and tomorrow. Not only for today, even for tomorrow. So this is what I understand about education. But if you look at this paradigm shift in the education, it's keep on changing. Why it's keep on changing? Because challenges are keep on changing. Opportunities are keep on changing. So education is also keep on changing. So let me uh, tell you, <clears throat> before the education was in a triangle shape, globalization, climate say, uh, change, and the use of technology. These three main issues were, should address by the education. Then afterwards, from triangle to it becomes the rectangle. One more component is added in education ecosystems. See, changing. It was triangle, now it became the rectangle. This is not a geometry class, but we have to see, right? So here, one more is the pandemic management. After the COVID era, now we have to make our students smart enough to manage the pandemic. So education systems should address that. But not only that, now you have the Pentagon, SDGs. So what it is said, because of this pandemic, now we have to be rushed to get all the 17 SDGs. So that also should be the issues of these educations. See, keep on changing it. It is said the education's lifeline is only for five years or to six years. If you set the curriculum today, by 2027, 2028, it has to be revised. Otherwise, you are giving the same old medicine for the new disease. So lifetime is five to six years. So how to make the education more smart? 
So education now, for this, if we talk about the future, future can be driven by the good education. Education for the future is dependent upon the skills that we need for the future. It is a time to, to explore what are the skills that we do need in the education. So these are the skills. Adaptabilities, emotional intelligence, self-learning, unlearning. So these are the skills that we have to so Especially out of these, adaptability and self-learning are the core skills that we do need in education. We have to train our, uh, our student to adapt in changing environment. They should not be nervous if the environment is changed. We have to make them strong. Not only that, we have to make them, we should teach them how to learn. We should teach them how to learn by themselves. So this, these are the skills. And another message I would like to tell you that education for all is the mandatory, is required. But the same education for all is disaster. Why? Because all our brains are wired differently. We learn the things differently in different ways, at different speeds. As a, as a student of computer science, I may like the programming, but I may not like the software engineering. Right? In the management student, they may like the finance, but they may not, not, not like the account. Right? So it is our responsibility to, to find out the potential of our student and to guide them as per they need. And that we call personalized learning. So personalized learning is not the optional, it is the mandatory. But to have the personalized learning, we need a huge set of data because you should know the behavior of individual student. And those huge set of data cannot be addressed from the existing technology. For that, we need the emerging technology. We need the concept of the big data. We need the, we need the concept and use of the artificial intelligence. We need the concept of the cloud computing. So these are the emerging technologies. So my message here is, technology is needed. We cannot avoid it. Either you like or you do not like, either you love or you don't love, there is no option. So education cannot move alone. It has to be empowered by this technology. And one thing what we do in the least developed country, we just borrow the technology from outside and we give the example, come on, it was very working very fine in, in the US. It was very good in Japan, right? That technology may be good in the US and Japan, but our local purpose, right, we have to be a little careful. So simply buying or borrowing or copying the technology will not solve our problem. So we should know, we should unlock the potential of the technology. We should know how the technology can be used to solve our problems. For that, we need education for the technology. Education is needed to identify the potential of the technology, use of the technology, and at the same time, technology has to empower the education. So T4E stands for the technology for the education. So future, if we really want to make our future bright, because I cannot predict what will happen tomorrow, because I am not a UTC or I am not like, you know, uh, to predict, right? But what I can predict tomorrow will not be same as today. What you have to teach, what we have to learn, we still do not know. But we have to make our student very comfortable in using the technology so that they can update themselves, they can learn by themselves, and they can enhance the adaptability by themselves. So education for the technology and the technology for the education is, as I said, it's not optional, it is mandatory. Thank you very much. <laughs>